Good morning, everyone. Yeah, welcome to our session um, upgrade from uh, OpenStack Uno you know to Mitaka. So this is a yeah, experience report, what we did for our cloud, Open Telecom Cloud, um, a joint venture together with uh, Huawei that we are doing, a public cloud run in Germany. Um, yeah, and we recently upgraded um, from Juno to Mitaka. And yeah, we want to tell you a little bit about um, what we, we did here. But first, some words about ourselves. Okay, uh, uh, welcome everyone. So uh, I'm Dennis Gu, uh, uh, Cloud Chief Architect from uh, Huawei Technologies. So uh, during the past uh, one years, especially the, the, a few months ago, we've just uh, worked uh, synergy with the uh, T-Systems to accomplish the online uh, version upgrade from Juno to Mitaka that is covering uh, nearly 2,000 servers spanning across the uh, two cities. So it's uh, uh, along these uh, uh, you know, practices we want to uh, share the, the, uh, our experiences and the methodologies of achieving a uh, service continuity that is expected from all the uh, critical uh, enterprise applications on top of this cloud. Good, my name is uh, Sebastian Wenner. I'm one of the architects behind Open Telecom Cloud working on this since now, yeah, two and a half years, building together with Huawei our public cloud and uh, yeah, taking part of major things in the infrastructure and uh, all the, the automation around it. Good. Um, let me show you a very short video for the beginning um, to show we are not alone here if that thing starts. So this is actually a commercial that was run by, by eBay on, on German television. Um, but as I saw it, it perfectly fitted to what we wanted to achieve here. Um, so basically, it's a pit stop uh, at 100 miles per hour. So while driving, changing the tires on the, the car that you are into, um, and uh, yeah, trying to achieve as much as um, continuity and availability for the end customer um, without actually influencing uh, yeah, the service. Yeah, and I think um, the, the, the perfect timing for, for changing your tires, and uh, we, I think, had the perfect timing for changing our OpenStack versions. So um, kudos to, to eBay for making that very nice commercial that fitted so well in my presentation here. Um, good. So let's get started. What, what are we talking about today? So um, first, giving you a bit of context. So bear with me if we have one or two marketing slides just to, to set the overall scene and, and the context. Um, a starting point, where we di did we start about one year, a bit more than one year ago in, in uh, 2016 when we put our public cloud live? Um, why did we go directly to Mitaka? And, and what is the, the update strategy behind? And, then some uh, things how to, to avoid or minimize downtime, I think, is the, the better formula, uh, better phrasing for that. And then uh, also customer communication and lessons learned, what we, we did with it. Yes, um, as I said, um, actually, it's uh, yeah, three marketing slides, so uh, sure you will survive it. Um, where did we come from? So T-Systems, as part of Deutsche Telekom, most probably you're more familiar with T-Mobile, um, which is the, the mobile business uh, part. Um, we did in the past classic outsourcing and uh, scale-up cloud, so our private cloud. Recently, we, we moved also into hybrid cloud with our vCloud offering, but what was missing from that whole puzzle was the, the public uh, cloud part. And that's where, where Open Telecom Cloud and our um, partnership here with Huawei came in, um, that we put together a public cloud in, in the European market um, that really scales and, and is secure. Um, so offering something that is really filling that gap between all these, these big players um, that you have in the market, like Amazon, like Google, like Azure, um, but running on an open platform, open stack, um, doing it in a secure way 
so that it's protected by, by data privacy and, and German legislation that is behind no third party access from non-European countries to the, the administrative back end. Affordable, so we are running uh, even below Amazon pricing uh, what we are offering there. And as I said, open based on OpenStack with all the APIs that you want and need to have to, to run a scalable cloud uh, application on top of it. Where did we start? Launch, CBIT 2016, so one of the, the big IT fairs in, in Germany. Um, was really a, um, the, the least viable product, I would say. So have a, a solid basis um, just with an infrastructure as a service offering, all the surrounding landscapes that you need to have to run it, um, but, but rather limited in the set of features, but a, a rock solid basis that we could start with. Um, so that was the, the basis where we, we are coming from. Um, and, and what we had there um, in, in 2016 um, at, at CBIT um, was the UNO release that we started with. If you compare that to the official upstream um, release schedule, by the time that we went live with it, UNO was already end of life, at least from the, the official upstream part of view. But therefore, I mean, we, we are partnering with, with Huawei and, and we still have the, the great opportunity to have a fully patched and, and managed um, distribution that will receive security fixes even after that time. Um, moving ahead, what we, we did now with uh, OTC 2.0, um, the, the Open Telecom Cloud Release 2, um, that we launched more or less one year after that uh, for, for CB 2017 this year, um, was that we moved to Mitaka. As you can see here, we, we are closing down the gap to, to the official release schedule. Um, having this half year release cycle in, in a service provider environment where you really have to focus on, on reliability and stability and, and a, a yeah, stable API basis for our customers, it's um, always the trade-off between releasing something that is fully tested, fully uh, compatible with what we have, uh, to trying to keep up with that schedule. We are, we are working hard to, to narrow down that gap so that we, we are moving closer to, to the official release schedule and uh, with the upcoming releases, um, we will get much closer to, to the, the official um, roadmap from, from the OpenStack community. Good. Preparations. So what did we need to do? Um, as we are, or as you saw from that puzzle slide um, a, a few slides ago, we are not um, the only ones in that huge um, Deutsche Telekom environment and not the only cloud that is run by, by our company. So a the, the supporting systems around it, the landscape around it, is a, a common and shared system, so identity management, um, onboarding of customers, the shop, the, the billing chain behind it. These are all services that are around our um, island, I would call it, uh, of Open Telecom Cloud. But we have to build many bridges um, to these environments um, to make sure that yeah, customers get onboarded, that they can get on the cloud, that we can um, collect charge data records and at the end of the day print a bill to the customer so that my salary gets paid and Daniela's and Kurtz and Clemens. Um, so um, that is the important part. So and, and that also imposes a lot of complexity. So if we are doing upgrades, we have to ensure compatibility to the systems before and the systems afterwards. So, um, the dependency on third-party services is um, something we can't neglect in, in all the, the things that we are doing. Then coordination with the vendor. I mean, we, we get update um, packages and input that we, we need to coordinate. What needs to be done in, in what order? Communicating to the customer. I mean, it was not completely downtime free, so the, the video was lying a bit, so we didn't do everything at, at full pace. Um, at some point in time, there was an infrastructure reboot that we could not avoid and did not want to avoid. Um, but also hardware and, and OS upgrades and, and all 
um, these uh, things that were happening around uh, needs to be coordinated. So bottom line, project planning, project planning, project planning. So you need to have a fairly good idea what you want to do and you need to plan well ahead. And um, that's what we did and we want to give you insight how we did that. Yeah, um, I mean, either you have Chuck Norris, then he will just do it on your own on the fly while driving that car and changing the tires in, in, in one, uh, one step. Um, but if you do not have Chuck, then you need a vendor or a supplier to, to support you there. And um, that's what we have with, uh, with Huawei. And Dennis, you want to tell a bit about more about the details, what happened under the hood? Okay. So uh, quite honored to be uh, playing the role as a uh, Chuck to, yeah. uh, feel the, uh, to, to face the challenges and fix the problem. So uh, basically, as, uh, as you know, that uh, the, the, the uh, major fundamental methodologies we've uh, been uh, prepared for the uh, seamless upgrading from Juno to Mitaka, this uh, great you know, uh, substantial software changes between the two major versions is first of all uh, via the, the delivers of a complete packages of upgrading automation tools, what we call as a fusion update. This is a, this is a tooling set, which is basically composed of both agentless, uh, Ansible-based automation framework that is uh, extended with a series of uh, uh, functional extensions as well as automation uh, uh, scripts to enable the uh, OpenStack uh, over-the-top service upgrades uh, as well as a agent-based uh, OpenStack and host hypervisor upgrading uh, systems, which we call as a fusion, de uh, fusion deployed and upgrading toolings uh, for, to, to facilitate uh, the upgrade stuffs, which is more closer to the, to the uh, finer granularity control of the operating system layer and hypervisor uh, 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 configuration options. And of course, it's, uh, there's an uh, uh, regression testing uh, that is uh, conducted in the so-called mirror, uh, mirror environment, which is a very replicated and uh, very same uh, configurations with the production one, so that we can do all the comprehensive grade test and functional test uh, in the mirror environment before it is uh, finally shipped it and activated in the production. And also, so that, uh, the, the so-called security updates and uh, with the hot fixed technologies, which is making sure that all the data plane and hyper, uh, hypervisor level upgrades is not affecting uh, or bringing any service discontinuity during the whole upgrading procedure. This is also very crucial, uh, you know, in comparisons to the normal uh, patching mechanisms that, that will normally uh, uh, incur the rebooting of the systems which will bring uh, disruptive uh, experiences uh, to uh, uh, negative experiences to the, to the uh, and, and tenants and customers. And of course, finally, here's the interesting here is that what we bring to the uh, OTC cloud is the cascading OpenStack, that is, uh, which is spreading across two cities, one Beer and one Matburg, two cities, with uh, each of the cities with a standalone deployment OpenStack instance. While we have a cascading layer setting on top of the two standalone uh, OpenStack in order to enable better scalabilities as well as the unified API exposures across the two availability zones. And all, uh, even during the whole upgrading procedures, this two independent availability zone OpenStack deployment uh, instances can be upgraded, you know, fully decoupled since the uh, cascading layer is talking with the cascaded a native OpenStack by means of a standardized uh, RESTful API. Okay. Okay. And regarding the fundamental methodologies of uh, accomplishing the challenging task of uh, uh, seamless upgrading the uh, over uh, 2,000 servers of physical service configuration uh, uh, cloud environments within two days, actually more specifically two nights, so we, we need to carefully, you know, planning the decoupled uh, upgrading steps. That is actually specifically, you know, uh, de de uh, separating the upgrading steps in three layers, horizontal layers. That is the uh, service plane layers, 
made up of a set of uh, uh, service consoles, um, IAS and PES, uh, diversified services sitting on top of uh, OpenStack, as well as the OpenStack controller itself that is covering both cascading and cascaded OpenStack, uh, together with the relevant OpenStack agents running on top of the high, uh, compute nodes, distributed compute nodes, and also the data plane. Here, the data plane uh, where we consider is um, uh, most critical uh, in terms of uh, get, uh, you know, ensuring the service continuity uh, experiences from the tenant perspective. Since it's uh, you know, uh, all the tenant uh, real-time workload, mission-critical workloads is running on top of these data plane, hypervisors, software-defined storages, as well as the software routers and distributed switches. You know, we need to guarantee that this you know, uh, uh, upgrading procedures is conducted in a very uh, seamless way. Or in other words, the upgrading procedures of the data plane should be uh, as less frequently as possible. Or if the upgrade is inevitable, we st still need to further on guarantee that we uh, uh, to leverage the advanced technologies like hot fix or hot replacement rather than doing the simple uh, you know, code rebooting based patching so that the, the whole you know, data plane is kept running without uh, being the, uh, necessarily uh, rebooting to enable the, the, the whole upgrades. Yeah. And also we, we need to leverage the clustering mechanisms since as you know, the distributed compute and storage nodes is spanning to hundreds of even thousands of nodes so we need to divide the data plane into several clusters, several clusters or fault domains. We need to conduct the uh, rolling upgrades of data plane, you know, cluster by cluster rather than uh, all in one time. Yeah. So uh, this is the uh, basic methodologies we've, uh, you know, taken especially. So the first day we accomplish all the data plane and service plane components upgrades uh, without affecting the data plane. You know, affect, uh, all the tenant workloads is kept running seamlessly uh, along the first night's upgrading of all the relevant, you know, uh, service components, as well as OpenStack controllers and agents. And the, the, the following days, the following two days, we accomplish it, all the, you know, uh, rolling upgrades, cluster by cluster. Normally, we, we organize the clustering of compute and distributed storage nodes into uh, typically a 50, 50 servers, 50 to 200 servers as a, a one rolling upgrade back batching, yeah, to accomplish them, uh, you know, gradually. Okay, good. And regarding the regression test, we think it is also uh, very crucial uh, since the, uh, we believe that the, the internal, you know, uh, test verifications uh, or integration uh, verification is not enough since uh, in the real production environment, we are encountered with the, uh, further challenges of being uh, integrated with the JSON the BSS subsystems, as well as the uh, VPN and public networking uh, connectivities and configurations. So all these uh, adjacent systems impact into the online systems of public cloud will need to be fully verified uh, with the full stack uh, of uh, software configuration. So with this uh, consideration in mind, so after the you know, uh, passing of the, the gate control uh, criteria from the development environment to the production environment, we will firstly conduct a series of you know, uh, service deployment, a great, uh, upgrade uh, testings, as well as the full functional automated testings of the full functionalities that is uh, deployed in the so-called pre-production environment. So that environment is having the very same configurations, comprehensive conf configurations compared to the production one. So uh, if only if everything is uh, accomplished very successfully with the, uh, uh, by uh, monitoring the relevant, you know, logs, uh, even uh, uh, manual ins uh, inspections, we will proceed with the next steps of uh, upgrading, rolling upgrading the real production environment to make it a full uh, active and onboarding. Yeah, and if there's any, during the procedures of uh, automated test for production, 
there's something wrong and not recoverable, then we will do a uh, rollback to the previous versions for the production one. And of course, that rollback could be even uh, conducted for decoupled microservices, uh, rather than uh, everything as a whole package, so that the uh, rollback procedures uh, and impacts will be minimized as far as possible. Yeah. And with regard to the uh, complexities and repeated uh, human uh, uh, configurations and low efficient re uh, actions, here we introduce it, the Ansible mechanisms to enable the automated uh, configurations and onboarding of the, uh, both the application as well as the components and uh, infrastructures, especially you know, uh, on the targeted uh, uh, host, dedicated host or host groups. Yeah. So here's the, especially it's uh, uh, based on the fundamental Ansible engines, we extended a series of uh, uh, commonly reusable functionalities like package management, configuration, environment, account, and node man uh, operation log management, this kind of extended functionalities uh, in extra to the fundamental uh, functions available in the Ansible framework so that uh, they can be invoked by the playbook uh, of the orchestration uh, scripts that is executed to enable the higher layer um, you know, sequential and workflow editing for the daily uh, uh, upgrading procedure. And in terms of uh, minimizing the service interruptions during the whole upgrading procedures, here we basically categorize, first, firstly addressing the minor version changes uh, within the OpenStack controller and the relevant agents, especially with the pre -pre prerequisite of the RPC interface compatibilities, or uh, you know, uh, even not changing between all the relevant components within the upgraded services. And the basic methodology here to guarantee the smoothness of the service layer uh, upgrades is by putting a HA proxy in front of the API servers, multiple instances of the API servers. Take an example here, we just select one of the instances of uh, API servers to be upgraded from version one to version two. Well, the uh, uh, HA proxies will guarantee that uh, all the remaining uh, APIs uh, will be uh, isolated so that before it's, uh, uh, the newly activated uh, uh, versions is becoming active. Yeah. So uh, with this means, this, uh, uh, the, the gradual or gray upgrades or rolling upgrade is enabled in the control layers to minimize the uh, provisioning impacts uh, during the uh, service components uh, upgrading procedure. And also there's uh, another cases with the major version uh, 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 changes or upgrades uh, where the, uh, within the scenarios, uh, there's uh, no possibilities for the leveraging the OpenStack, say for example, Nova, uh, minor version compatibilities and self-negotiation mechanisms. Uh, in that cases, only the you know, uh, replacement upgrade is possible. With that uh, you know, consideration in mind, we need to accomplish a set of, uh, you know, uh, stopping the, the service instances and then restarting the, uh, uh, booting the, the newly version, uh, uh, upgraded versions correspondingly uh, around, uh, with around 30 to 40 minutes of uh, service interruptions in total for these uh, replacement based major conversion changes. This is, uh, this, you know, uh, uh, Actually, with regard to Juno to Mikata versions, most of the components is relevant to these uh, major version changes uh, procedures, especially featured by the incompatibility versions of the RPC of the relevant you know, connectors and schedulers and authentication modules. Yeah. Next. Okay, next. So uh, with regard to the minimized configurations, uh, it's most uh, mission critical and uh, service continuity sensitive, uh, you know, hypervisor and data plane upgrades. Of course, the best approach is, uh, you know, especially commonly used in the virtualization and private cloud approaches is the live migration. But 
uh, considering the there is uh, still you know some limitations of line migration, since the the line migration will firstly requiring you some uh, uh, you know redundant uh, available resources as well as there's uh, you know lots of limitations when you're doing line migration across different flavors of uh, VM instances. Uh, and also, the, you will have even some failure rates. Uh, uh, as we uh, observe in our live environment, the live migration failure rates might be uh, three to four percent. That is uh, translated into 97 uh, average uh, live, mig live migration successful rates. And also, especially here, these, uh, with the line migration, in order to guarantee the successful rate, we need to, uh, according to, since we are using Zen hypervisors uh, in the incumbent environment, with uh, the PV driver, we need to have a fine tuning and troubleshooting a PV driver rather than the open source PV ops driver to guarantee a higher successful rate of line migration. So that line migration uh, as we uh, suggested, it, it will not be the primary or first choice for doing the, the hypervisor and data plane upgrades. Our suggestion will be rather than a hot fix solution, especially enabling the so-called function replacement by means of uh, instruction you know, uh, jumping from a local uh, code segment from the original one and then accomplish the replaced hot function segment and jump back to the recovered instruction sets. This is the general uh, mechanisms we were proposing to ensure the seamless, uh, the seamless uh, you know, data plane upgrades of the whole procedures. And this uh, hotfix technologies successfully in, uh, enable the reduction of necessary boot, uh, reboots by up to 80%. Mm. Yeah. And this is just the... Uh, uh, a pros and cons analysis of the host fix technologies in terms of its uh, prerequisites and uh, relevant limitations. Especially it is of course only uh, you know, limited to the you know, uh, function changes rather than the whole process changes. And also it's, uh, uh, it's only a code segment changes uh, instead of uh, you know, uh, the the you know long jump um, you know changes in, in the in the future roadmap we will support the whole process you know replacement in the user spaces so that the, the hotfix can be applicable to not only uh, security patches or some minor changes in the kernels in uh, within the functions uh, it, it will be uh, ap applicable to a broader cases to enable a, a, a more smooth uh, re replacement on the fly in the in the data plane. Yeah, okay. And of course, there's a lot of cases which is not yet uh, you know, covered, uh, capable of being covered fully by the hot fixes. Being aware of these situations, we still need some other means of uh, 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 technologies and mechanisms to minimize the service interruptions during the whole uh, data plane uh, upgrade procedure, like the line migrations do and shut down the virtual machine locally and rebooting that, uh, or based on the shared storages of uh, VMHA, to rebooting that systems, uh, the virtual machine instances, without rebooting the whole host OS or hypervisors. So it, uh, in comparison to the local reboot of the uh, host OS and VM, the VMHA will enable a shorter service interruptions. So it will be the, uh, and also the applicability of these uh, VMHA is much broader. Also, and the uh, interruptions, uh, you know, uh, SLA is even better than uh, local VM uh, reboot and shutdown. So that's the, the uh, you know, the primary recommended situations where uh, hotfix is not applicable, yeah. Uh, only when these, uh, uh, with the special concerns of the you know, high-end customers for live migration, uh, especially there's an even zero, near, nearly zero interruption uh, uh, service level is required for, for some high-end enterprise customers, then we will uh, suggest the introduction of a live migration as, a, as a optional, but rather than uh, ubiquitous suggested solutions for the, for the 
you know, uh, downtime minimization. And, and finally, it's regarding the data persistence layers, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, interruption minimizations, especially considering the software-defined distributed storages. Here we, uh, uh, in, in uh, Huawei-powered uh, public cloud solutions, we're using the DHT, distributed hashing table, or the uh, fully distributed client-side, uh, you know, storage uh, clients and uh, uh, agents interconnected with the uh, distributed storage backend so that uh, in order to guarantee the, the continuous data access of the shared storages for all the VM clusters, we also introduce a hotfix, similar hotfix mechanisms in the uh, client side distributed uh, agents so that uh, the, the accessing to the backend storages will not be interrupted during the whole proce uh, upgrading procedure. Well, with regard to the persistent data volume itself, as can be seen, with the, uh, these uh, uh, DHT uh, mechanisms of a decentralized architecture, all the single virtual machine volumes are being partitioned into multiple copies across different you know, fault domains or different uh, isolated the four domain uh, server clusters. So once we uh, conduct the rolling upgrade of the, the backend uh, storage server side, uh, clusterings, you know, uh, you know batch, uh, batch clusters, clusters by clusters, rather than, uh, you know, uh, all in, in, in one time. So we, we can uh, guarantee that the multiple uh, copies corresponding to the same partitions of the volumes will not be rebooting or not available at the very same time so that the service continuity of the persistent data layers can be uh, finally uh, fully guaranteed. Yeah. Good. Then uh, talking a bit about customer communication. Um, not uh, as much as technical detail as, as that, but not less important as that. Um, so talking to the customer is really one of the big things that you need to do if you want to, to be successful there. Um, telling the customer what is happening enables them to understand what, what you are doing and, and what they need to take into account if they want to, to run their business uh, successfully. So one part of it is, is doing proactive communication so we are planning to upgrade the service then and that. There will be an interruption expected to be around 30 to 40 minutes in that time frame. Um, make sure that all your VMs are running in a secure mode and that you are distributed across the availability zones so that you have a, a scaled application that is able to, to bear with that uh, downtime that may come. But also on the other hand side, I mean doing all these preparations did not prevent us from running into some problems and bugs. And, and also telling that to the customer what has happened and why did it happen um, is one important part of, of doing all that. And I mean, you know all the channels like email, like blogs, like the social media to, to communicate to your customers. That is really the important part that you need to do. Um, yeah, and, and talking about problems, what we had, um, let me tell you a bit about what problems we, we faced uh, during these uh, upgrades that we had. Um, so one point, scaling is really an, an important factor. So as you saw before, we did test that in, in four staging environments before actually putting it on production. And still we ran into a scaling problem um, that we had a race condition between neutron pod generation and VM creations. So it ended up that VMs got created faster than neutron could create pods. Um, so having the machine coming up with no network. And as we are running cloud in it in these virtual machines, guess what has happened? Um, it thought, hey, I can't talk to my metadata service. Um, I am a new provisioned machine, and it did what it was designed for. It did a cloud in it, and um, yeah, so we ended up with a new UUID and a new SSH host key. And um, look at that from a customer perspective. I want to SSH into my machine, 
and there is a different SSH host key, so that is a disaster. Um, but telling the customer, hey, look, this is the problem, that's why we run into that problem. If you face that problem, for that one single time, consider it as secure, uh, because it is a problem on our side. Um, and um, we, we fixed it for the, the uh, second uh, availability zone, so um, that we did not run into that problem again. Um, but really, there the point, talk open to your customers. Um, I mean, you are, so um, uh, Murphy is really a, um, yeah, a bad, um, whatever. Um, so he, <laughs> he gets his right, always. And, and that was the, the one thing that we, we were running into, or as you had yesterday in the keynotes, the demo got had, had its sacrifice yesterday in the, the keynote, so that was the one thing that happened. Um, yes, and it also hit us, but talk about it and, and yeah, fix it. One other thing is we, we discovered a last minute bug also in Neutron, um, where a resource cleanup would clean up more than it should be, uh, should be cleaning up. So it could accidentally create a, a wrong VNIC or too much VNIC. Uh, across a customer. So one customer deletes a machine and uh, it will affect another customer. And that uh, yeah, really made us do a full stop. That was on the night or in the evening before we wanted to do the rollout in, in the night. And um, going back to that whole delivery chain, detecting a bug and being brave enough to say, no, I do not do the upgrade, even though I communicated that to the customer that tonight there will be an upgrade, and telling them, hey, look, it will happen in a week. Once we did the root cause, fixed that bug, put it back upstream, and um, yeah, retested it in the full regression chain, and, and then roll it out with confidence that this will not happen. Yes. Some further words, what we discovered in that whole process um, during the upgrade. Yeah, so besides the, uh, uh, the fundamental issues that is uh, being uh, identified uh, during the preparation of upgrades, we've also identified a series of uh, concurrency and racing uh, uh, problems that is existing uh, within the communities of Mitaka. That is, uh, here we just take a few examples. Is, uh, you know, as you, uh, the, the typical configurations of our public cloud environments is uh, uh, be, being uh, installed with the cust customer base of over 1,000 physical servers within each availability zones, which is seld uh, seldomly encountered within uh, private cloud scenarios. So that, uh, take an example here, the lack of instance of uh, both the metadata instance UUID of a Nova service, as well as the lack of port ID, uh, secure uh, ACME's uh, database, the, the indexing of a multi-dimensional uh, querying uh, 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 you know, fields is lacking, so that uh, the, the relevant you know, query, uh, batch mode query uh, performances will be degraded uh, dramatically when we are doing the you know, uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, VM queries, batch queries, uh, on top of the basis of uh, 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 installation base of uh, uh, tens of thousands of uh, virtual machines, especially for the concurrent rebooting and provisioning scenarios. And also the host managers, and another examples, to read the deleted instances information on startup. The, the host manager is a feature that is introduced in the Kilo releases to offload the DB queries for the uh, filtering, uh, filtering schedulings. So this mechanism is also, you know, uh, here we, we identify a, a, a box in, this, uh, in the host manager's optimizations to enable, uh, to, uh, to, to delete the, to uh, filtering out the deleted instances informations to guarantee the performances. Uh, and similar situations uh, being identified, take an example here, so it's the DV, DVR mechanisms where the L3 agents is being uh, scheduled uh, and, re, uh, and uh, unbundlings between the, each of the compute nodes and L3 agent, which is only 
should be applicable to centralized routing rather than DVR routing. Yeah, many others, you know, uh, uh, examples here, uh, like the recalculate uh, NUMAs on consuming the actual instances from the selected host to reduce the racing windows for the NUMA and uh, you know, uh, hardware, uh, ag uh, ha hardware and uh, specific uh, uh, resource scheduling. Yeah. Good. So closing down with a few words. So what did Mitaka bring us? A, really, a, a lot of new features: bare metal, mm -hmm. DNS as a service, seed orchestration. Really, a, mm -hmm. a lot of things that we we improved our overall portfolio so mm -hmm. if you compare that what we we saw at the beginning so really we we stacked up a lot of new features that we have now available on open telecom cloud we are down at the marketplace uh, booth b4 if you want to have a talk to us um, and uh, have further questions to to our offering uh, just step by the the uh, the booth and and we are happy to to talk and explain more details uh, to you so thanks for your attention. Um, yeah, and if there are further questions, I think Dennis will be around for a few minutes. I have to run to my next talk. So if you want to learn also a bit about security and doing cross-border um, yeah, business with OpenStack in the US, in the European Union, in Germany, so just follow me to the next talk. Thank you. Thank you.